Now for each of these problems, feel free to pause the video and try the problem yourself and then see what the solution is. So number one, which of the following equations correspond to the graph below? Is it A, B, C, or D? Well, the first thing that we realize is that the graph opens downward. So we need to have negative x squared. So we can eliminate A because there's a positive sign in front of the x squared term. And we can eliminate D because there's a positive sign in front of x plus 1 squared. So we're between C and B. Now, what other features can we use to distinguish answer choice B from C? One thing we can use is the y-intercept. Notice that the y-intercept is 2. That's the point 0, comma 2. So when x is 0, y should be equal to 2. Let's focus on C. If we plug in 0, what is the value of y? It's a negative 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 3. That's going to equal 3. That's not 2. So we can eliminate answer choice C. And looking at B, we can see that the graph has shifted one unit to the left and up three. The vertex is negative one, three, which is what we have here. This is negative one, this is positive three. And let's confirm the y-intercept. So if we plug in zero into this equation, what is the value of y? Three minus zero plus one squared. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2. So this will give us a y-intercept of 2. So answer choice B is the right answer. Number 2, which of the following values is an x-intercept of the graph y equals 2x squared plus 10x minus 28? So what should we do to find the x-intercept? In order to find the x-intercept, we need to replace y with 0 and solve for x. Now the first thing that we can do is we can divide everything by 2 if you want to. Or we can just factor out the GCF, which is 2. This will leave us with x squared plus 5x minus 7. Now you could use the quadratic equation to solve for x, or you can complete the square. But I think that it's easier if we factor this expression. And that shouldn't be a negative 7. That should be 14. Negative 28 divided by 2 is negative 14. Now, what two numbers multiply to negative 14, but add to the middle coefficient 5? This is going to be 7 and negative 2. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, but 7 plus negative 2 is 5. So to factor, it's going to be x plus 7 and x minus 2. So now we can set both factors equal to 0. So the x-intercepts are positive 2 and negative 7. Now positive 2 is not listed as an answer choice. So the only one that we can go by is with negative 7. So easy answer. Number 3. Which of the following values of x is a solution to the equation 35x squared minus 3x minus 54 is equal to 0. It might be difficult to factor that expression. So let's solve by using the quadratic formula. So a is the number in front of x squared. a is 35. b is negative 3. And c is negative 54. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So b is negative 3, which means that b squared is positive 9, minus 4 times a, which is 35, times c, which is negative 54, all divided by 2a, or 2 times 35. So this is going to be positive 3, negative 4 times 35, that's negative 140, times negative 54, that's positive 7,560, and 2 times 35 is 70. 
7560 plus 9 is 7569. And if we take the square root of that, it's going to be 87. So it's 3 plus or minus 87 divided by 70. 3 plus 87 is 90. 90 over 70 is 9 over 7. So we don't see that solution. Now 3 minus 87 over 70, that's negative 84 over 70. Both numbers are divisible by 7. Negative 84 divided by 7 is negative 12. 70 divided by 7 is 10. Now we could divide both numbers by 2, so half of 12 is 6, half of 10 is 5. So it's negative 6 over 5, which means that D is the answer. Number 4. What is the range of the equation y equals 4 plus x plus 3 squared? Well, let's go ahead and graph it. Or at least let's draw a rough sketch. The vertex is going to be negative 3 comma 4. You need to change the sign on the inside, but not the one on the outside. So negative 3 comma 4 is 3 units to the left, but up 4 units. So it's going to be here. Now, there's a positive sign in front of the x squared, which means that the graph opens upward. This is all we need to do to find the range. Now, we can clearly see that the lowest y value is 4. And because it goes up, the highest is infinity. So the range starts from 4 and it increases towards infinity, which means that answer choice C is the right answer. Number 5. Identify the axis of symmetry in the equation y equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. So we have a quadratic equation in standard form. Our goal is to find the x-coordinate of the vertex which is the axis of symmetry. To find the x-coordinate, it's negative b over 2a. b is the number in front of x, that's 4. a is the number in front of x squared, which is negative 1. So this is negative 4 divided by negative 2, and that's positive 2. So the axis of symmetry is x is equal to 2, which means that answer choice d is the right answer. Number 6. Which of the following equations is equivalent to y equals x squared plus 6x plus 7? So if we look at all of the answer choices, we can see that it's in vertex form. And this equation is in standard form. To convert a quadratic function from standard form to vertex form, we need to complete the square. Half of 6 is 3. So let's add 3 squared to the right side. Now we can add 3 squared to the left side, or we can subtract 3 squared from the right side. Let's do that instead. So now we need to factor this trinomial, which is going to be a perfect square trinomial. Keep in mind, you can literally see everything that you need. It's going to be x, and then whatever this sign is, plus this number before you square it, 3 squared. And 3 squared is 9. So the answer is x plus 3 squared, and 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So this is it. The right answer is uh, answer choice D. The only issue with C is that we have a positive 2 instead of a negative 2. So C is not correct, and everything else is just different. So D is the right answer. Number 7. What is the maximum value of the function y equals 3 minus x plus 5 squared. How can we find the answer to this question? To find the maximum value, we need to find the vertex. So since we see x plus 5, we need to change the sign. And it's going to be negative 5. The 3 is going to be the same. We don't need to change the sign. So the vertex is negative 5, comma 3. Now let's draw a rough sketch of the graph. So the graph shifts 5 units to the left and up 3 units. Now there's a negative sign in front of the x squared, which means that this graph is going to open downward. The maximum value is the y value of the function. The highest y value is 3. So the maximum value represents the y coordinate of the vertex. Therefore, d 
is the right answer to this problem. Number eight, which of the following equations contain a solution? Three plus five i and three minus five i. So first, let's write the equation in factored form. In both answers, we have positive three. So we're gonna change that to negative three. Here we have plus five i, so we're gonna make it negative five i. And the other one is gonna be x minus three plus five i. So now we need to FOIL these two trinomials. Now, in an earlier lecture, we came up with an easier way instead of FOILing and getting nine terms initially. This expression is equivalent to x minus three squared minus five i times five i. So let's FOIL x minus three times x minus three. Negative five i times positive five i is negative 25i squared. x times x is x squared. Negative 3, well, before we do that, x times negative 3, that's negative 3x. And negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And finally, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Now keep in mind, i squared is equal to negative 1. So negative 25 times i squared is positive 25. Now let's combine like terms. Negative 3x plus negative 3x is negative 6x. 9 plus 25 is 34. So this is the answer. And that corresponds to answer choice C, which is the answer. Number 9. Which of the following equations contain the points 0, 5, 1, 4, and 2, 7? Now instead of using a system of equations and actually doing a problem, to find the equation in standard form, I think it's easier if we just plug in the points and see which one works. Now the first point that we should plug in is zero. Whenever we have an equation in standard form, when x is zero, y is going to equal to the constant term c. So we have the first point zero five. So therefore, we need to look for 5. A and B have the constant term 5, which means that one of them is the answer. C and D will not be the answer because they don't have the constant term 5. For example, let's plug in 0 into C. It's going to be 3 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 6. 0 squared is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. And so y is equal to 6. So when x is 0, we're always going to get the constant term that we see here. So we need to get 5, not 6. That's why we can eliminate c. For d, it's going to give us 7. So we're between a and b. So now let's use elimination. Let's try the second point, 1, 4. Let's see if it works for answer choice a. So let's replace x with a value of 1. Negative 1 squared is negative 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. So answer choice A doesn't work, which means the answer must be B. But let's make sure. Let's plug in 1 into B. So it's going to be 2 times 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 5. This is 2 minus 3 plus 5. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. So that works. We got the y value of 4. And let's try the last point. So let's plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, and 8 minus 1 is 7. So that corresponds to the y value in the point 2, comma 7. Therefore, b is indeed the right answer. So this is the last question of the quiz. The revenue generated by company XYZ due to the sale of textbooks can be modeled by the function r of x is equal to 1500 plus 80x minus 0.01x squared. Part A, 
How many books should the company sell to maximize the revenue? And part B, what is the maximum revenue of the company? So this is going to be a free response question. To find out the number of books to maximize the revenue of the company is basically the x coordinate of the vertex. We need to use the equation x is equal to negative b over 2a. b is the number in front of x, which is uh, 80. And a is the number in front of x squared, which is negative 0 0.01. The two negative signs will cancel, and 2 times 0 0.01 is 0 0.02. So it's going to be 80 divided by 0 0.02, which is 4,000. So to maximize the revenue, the company needs to sell 4,000 textbooks. Now to find a maximum revenue, which is the y value of the vertex, plug in x. So let's find the revenue when x is 4,000. So it's 1,500 plus 80 times 4,000 minus 0 0.01 times 4,000 squared. 80 times 4,000. 8 times 4 is 32, and we just need to add the four zeros. Let's just make sure, and that is correct. 4,000 squared is 16 million times 0 0.01, so that's going to be 160,000. So if we add these three numbers, The maximum revenue is 161500 And so that's the answer.